it might just take a few seconds. There we go. Yeah. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Green and Mourner Show here on Newcastle Fans TV. It is a huge weekend of Premier League football and probably one of the biggest games of the weekend, if not the biggest games of the weekend, is the first game of the weekend at St. James's Park as Arsenal make the trip up north, all the way up north, 12.30 on a Saturday. I'm sure all those Arsenal fans will be delighted for that early start. But one Arsenal fan, one very famous Arsenal fan that will definitely be watching is a comedian extraordinaire, a man who is synonymous with Arsenal Football Club as well with the Athletics podcast, The Handbrake Off as well. And if it isn't any better at all, he's got a tour as well on the 16th of November. He will be at the stand keeping it together. It is Mr. Ian Stone. Ian, welcome to the Green and Mulder Show. How are you? Yeah, I'm all right. I'm, uh, I am indeed keeping it together. Thank you very much for asking. I, I was staggered to learn, Ian, that this is your first nationwide tour. Uh, yeah, a lot of people have asked me that. And it was, so, I don't know, I, I never quite got it together before and then I and then I thought all right go on then let's see what happens and I and I I put the dates together and announced it and I got all these messages going it's about bloody time and I thought yeah I thought, well that's nice but I've just um I've been busy I've been doing other things and um I've been gigging you know I gig all the time yeah. but uh yeah I never I started going to Edinburgh I went back to Edinburgh in 2022 it's the first time in about 14 years I kept saying to my missus all through the 2010s I want to go to Edinburgh and she went no don't be an idiot <laughs> and then for some reason in 2022 I said it again and she went yeah go on then and I thought oh dear um and then I had to write a show and then it went well and I went back and then went back again I thought I'm going to take it on tour this this time take it around the country so that's what I'm doing it's not for I suppose for any comedian we've had a few obviously comedians on the, the show as well but there's no bigger buzz than being on tour being live interacting with the audience as well is, is that the biggest buzz a, a comedian can get <sighs> I mean, I mean, honestly, I, the buzz that we do it for is standing on stage talking shit in front of other people and getting laughs. I mean, that's the truth of it. And and that's what it's about. And whether you're doing it on tour or in a club, if people are enjoying it, I mean, obviously it has been, I've been doing it, I've done about seven or eight dates in this tour and people coming to see you and then buying a book afterwards. It's really, really nice. But the whole thing, honestly, not having a job is a buzz, let me tell you. <laughs> Yeah, I'm hearing you. I'm hearing you. Um, the the thing I wanted to ask you, Ian, whilst we're, whilst we're talking about um, the comedy side of things, before we talk about our respective football teams, uh, during the days of you know Mock the Week, and you would you I would have thought that a nationwide tour would have been on the cards there, but there was I've heard a, a lot of other comedians say that there was a kind of dark undertone to kind of Mock the Week, and it was very competitive and not all nicey nicey. What was what was your experience of it? <laughs> Yeah, uh, I only did it a couple of times. I described it as like seven drowning men fighting over one life jacket, uh, is how I said it. It, it was quite uh, competitive, yeah. I think I think lately, actually, or certainly the last few years before it, uh, it stopped, it was much more no after you, no after you. But certainly when I did it, it wasn't like that. Um, yeah, it, it was quite. I wouldn't say dark undertone. It's just it was just ultra competitive, really. And and comics can get like that sometimes. Yeah, certainly, certainly. I'll tell you what is very competitive, and that's Premier League football. And it is a massive game on Saturday: Newcastle United versus Arsenal. Um, we've, we've spoken to George Cole and Chris Walker, obviously part of the Athletic as well. They cover Newcastle United, and. I have to be honest, I think when this game comes up, Newcastle versus Arsenal, I've got so many memories. What are the memories that you think of as well? Because when we obviously read George's articles and Chris's articles in particular, when they describe certain games, this game in particular, I'm like, I want to read more, I want to read more, I want to read more, because there's always something to talk about. Um, all right. I mean, honestly, first the first one is from uh, 1970, Sonny, where Malcolm McDonald scored a hat-trick on a really cold, freezing on a Tuesday night, I think, in December. And he came down to us and he got a hat-trick and he beat you 5-3. Um, that was, that's the first Arsenal-Newcastle game. That was a Highbury that I remember. And then uh, quite a lot of bad memories, to be honest. We checked T.O.T. getting the 4-4 and Joey Barton being a cheating bastard and getting uh, Abu Diaby getting sent off. Um, what else? I, I mean, there's been some big victories. We beat you like 
seven three at, at Highbury, and Theo Walcott got a hat trick, I think. Um, and and also the the one the one two years ago when you absolutely battered us uh, at uh, at St James's, and we ended up ended up in fifth place in the Premier League, and um, that was sort of featured on on the Amazon documentary. Really, us about us not winning our duels. Um, yeah, it's quite a tough, uh, tough place to go for the Arsenal. It's a tough place for anyone, isn't it? you got to draw with Man City the other week. Yeah, I, mean, I, thought, I thought I thought you were being very polite there, actually. I was expecting Dennis Bergkamp with that fluke against Dabba Well, there Dabba. is that one. There is that one as well. Now you mention it. I mean, yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's, you know what? There's so many games. Dennis Bergkamp, yeah, but I wasn't at that game as well. So it's I, I there's there's particular memories for games I've been at. Um uh, but Dennis, yeah, that was uh, that was a tremendous bit of football. But the thing about Dennis Burkamp is he did stuff. I know it was obviously special, but he did stuff like that all the time. I mean, he was just a ridiculous footballer. He yeah. was at the Emirates. He was at the Emirates on uh, on Sunday for the Liverpool game, and it was just lovely to see him. Really. Well, whilst you mentioned the Emirates, we'll come back onto the the, the game itself shortly. But um, there's a big hoo ha at the moment um, with the Newcastle United fan base. A, a big debate as to whether we try and remould and and um enhance the capacity of St James's Park or do we start afresh and build this mega stadium um what one of the drawbacks for me is you kind of lose the atmosphere the soul of the place I'm, i prefer much more traditional grounds and whatnot obviously highbury a fantastic uh place to play football and to watch football how was that transition for you from an arsenal fan's perspective a bit painful. The a bit painful, if I'm honest with you. I mean, I mean, we knew it was coming, and we had with seats. We could only get thirty eight thousand in uh, uh, in Highbury, and, and Arsene Wenger saw. He knew that we needed a bigger stadium. These, the, I mean, you, you know, you're talking about moving to a bigger stadium. You've already got fifty one, haven't you, or something like that. So, uh, <laughs> this is how it is. But it was. It was hard to leave Highbury because, you know, I grew up there. I mean, that was that was where I started watching football and I saw I had so many great memories there. So it was difficult. But what I remember was on the last day and the last game of the season when we beat, was it, I think it was Wigan 4-2, and Thierry Henry got a hat-trick. And I, for some reason, I was sat up at the back of the West Stand and I went up the stairs and there, and there was like a sort of balcony out the back and I looked across and there was our new stadium sitting there uh, half a mile away in the same borough, you know, in the same locale. You could still essentially take the same trip. And that meant a lot to us. Um, I mean, there was talk about moving it to King's Cross, which is not too far away. But uh, I, I'm glad we're in Islington and it, and it felt good. I mean, were you guys? Yeah, I'm sure St. James... St. James's feels the same way. I mean, where are they going to build a new one? Are they going to build a new one? I mean, because they were talking about putting it on the town more. They're not going to do that, surely. No, I think um, next door is Leeds' Park, and that's that's probably the favourite in terms of the best sort of location because there's a lot more land. You can obviously build a, a larger stadium. But I think to add to Sam's point, Ian, when you look back at that, that was totally 2006. Yeah, you moved to you moved to the Emirates. It's been eighteen years, and you know, yes, don't get me wrong, we would be ha- more than happy with a couple of FA Cups, but has it actually progressed the club? Do you think to the point where you think in eighteen years' time? Because I was probably expecting if I was an Arsenal fan, maybe one, two Champions Leagues, more Premier Leagues as well. <laughs> well, that's nice that you were thinking that. Has it progressed the club? I mean, look, you got to understand that that we that we decided to build this new stadium, and then suddenly Roman Roman Abramovich turns up and upsets everything, and then suddenly it's all about money in a way that it never was, and the stadium didn't have quite the effect that uh, it might have done. Um, Arsene Wenger was a visionary, but what he didn't realise was quite you know vulture capitalism it's the most voracious thing right and and obviously you understand this better than most people in newcastle so do you know it's i think the stadium's great um and it feels like home that's what i think about it it feels like home yeah i would have liked a couple of champions leagues and a couple of league titles but you know we're up against so much money it's incredibly difficult so uh, certainly the last two, three years, since COVID actually, um, it has felt like home with our new manager and our and our new young team. 
you know, and there's a great atmosphere there. It's much more hostile than it ever used to be, noisier than it ever used to be. Um, I mean, I love going there. I genuinely do. And, and, and yeah, a trophy would be lovely. A big trophy would be lovely. Um, has it progressed the club as far as... I think it's a complex question. That's what I think. So, so what you're saying is, if Newcastle were to build a brand new stadium, we need another pandemic to make it feel more homely. <laughs> you need a pandemic to kill off a couple of the older fans who who don't make a lot of noise, right? <laughs> that's what's happened at the Emirates, right? About two thousand people of my age haven't come back, uh, <laughs> and 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 basically their seats have been filled by young people. And so when we do stand up, if you love Arsenal, right, everyone's up. Um, whereas three, four years ago, you could stand up if you love Arsenal and there'd be loads of us, including me, we go, oh, sit down. We paid a thousand quid for these seats. Our artists is not leaving them. So it's a very, it's a different atmosphere there now. It is hostile. There's a lot of noise and it's as it should be. Mm, interesting. Interesting. It's it's one that's going to rumble on for, for Newcastle fans for... Bloody ages. Uh, until they St. James make is, a decision. St. James is a great atmosphere, right? I mean, it's a great yeah. atmosphere down there. And when you go, guys get going, I mean, I watched you in the Champions League last year and the noise with some of those games, it was incredible. And, and uh, uh, yeah, I, I think you do lose a bit of that if you move to a new stadium. Of course you do. But you can also get another 25,000 people there. That makes a lot. That makes up quite a lot. Plus, it's, you can get tickets as well. Because if we were in a 30, 38,000 seat stadium, there'd be a lot of disappointed people at the moment. So, Well, the, the, there are in the Newcastle fan base at the moment. So anyway, 50, yeah. 52,000 just isn't enough. I mean, no. look, 20, 20 years ago, it was the second biggest domestic stadium, only behind Old Trafford. And now it's it's falling behind so many teams. So it, it, it's an interesting one. But looking at, once again, at the game uh, this Saturday, it was it was a memorable fixture last uh, last season for controversial reasons. I don't remember um, it. I don't remember anything about it. I, it's, I it's, of... it's, it's, well, I, I, I could be, uh, I could be a bit of a dick and ask you what shape of football is. Um, but, are you going to be a bit of a dick and ask me what shape of football is? I mean, I mean, in what? Oh man, I don't actually oh, care about that. You bit, you bit. Now I have bit. You, I have bit. you wanted me to buy it, so I've bitten. You know what? Uh, I'll give, I'll give, I'll give you that the ball was probably not completely over the line because it was Joe Willock, and you know what? We still love Joe anyway. But it was a push on Gabriel. I mean, it was. So, you know, but anyway, what can you do? Refereeing decisions go against you. Arsenal know that better than anyone this season. We've had a few yeah. dodgy ones. And um, it happens. It happens. I mean, that game was that game that we're talking about was meandering towards a 0-0 draw. It was. And that's probably what it would have ended up. As it turns out, we didn't lose a league title by one point, which obviously would have made it painful. Yeah. But... I I um I, I saw this Gary Neville thing the other day where he's put the ball where it was and he's examining it from different angles and showing the cameras and everything. And I thought, still, we're talking about this. Still, we've had 10 refereeing controversies since that day, mate. I mean, we've moved yeah. on from that. We had a bloke sent off for, for getting kicked by some other fella this year. Anyway... um. Yeah, I, I I could I know Mikel was fuming. All all Arsenal fans were, but you know what? You 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 win some, you lose some, right? So so are, are we are we not to expect a backlash then? Because you referenced the two 0 defeat where you you absolutely bottled it. I think it's fair to say the one that was in the documentary, and then the season after that, you you battered us at St James's. Well, we didn't batter you. We didn't batter you. But what happened was the first 10, 15 minutes, you had a goal disallowed, I think, and and uh, you absolutely battered us. But then we sort of got the measure of it. And, yeah. we, and we, and because in the first 10, 15 minutes, I thought, oh my God, it's going to happen again. But they were a better team that year and they and they got the measure of it and they won 2-0. And in the end, they ran out pretty, cool, uh, pretty uh, easy winners. But, it's never easy going to St. James's. I mean, I, I'm glad it's at half 12 because I think that takes away a little bit of the atmosphere, to be honest with you. I know the travelling fans, I wanted to go, but I couldn't get a ticket for this one. But I know the travelling fans, um, you know, it's an early start for them. But, uh, and I'm sure there will be an atmosphere there, but I think it gives us a bit of an advantage, it, it, it being, or gives you less of an advantage, is what I would say, it being a 12.30 start as opposed to 5.30. Yeah, definitely. I'm sure there'll be a few Arsenal fans that'll be making a very early trip on the Friday as well. Maybe maybe 
spending a bit of having enjoying the culture as Mika Richards was once said about Newcastle on a Friday night. I'm sure that <laughs> might I'm sure a few Arsenal fans might uh, be interested in that. What the big market. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And we love that sort of culture. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> but um let's let's stick with Arsenal. Um look, five wins from the first nine games this season. I'm looking at Spurs away, which is a massive game, of course. Villa away, not many teams go to Villa Park and get three points or take three points back to where are they from? You look at, obviously, the Bournemouth defeat was a bit of a, it was, well, it was a debacle, really. Obviously, was, the, the we, were absolute, we were dog shit that day. We were absolute dog shit that day. And that was the one bad, bad performance uh, and the one bad result. You know, you take a 2-2 draw at Man City, you take a 2-all uh, draw at home to Liverpool, although I thought if our defenders stayed on the pitch, we'd have beaten them. Um, yeah. I don't think we've been playing that well, but actually we played 13 games this season. Uh, after 13 games last season, we won eight, drawn four and lost one, and we have the same record this year. So it's not, it's you know, we're doing okay. We've had a lot of injuries, and I'm not. it's not about excuse. I'm just saying we've, we've lost our captain, uh, we've lost uh, various players uh, for uh, quite a lot of defenders. Um, yeah, it's not been as smooth a start as we made the last two years, but we're in it, you know, and the boys believe it as well. So uh, I, I've just got to hope that uh, we'll uh, we'll do the business. But, um, you know what? I love this football team. Bakayo Saka is just one of the best footballers I've ever seen. I absolutely love him. Martin Odegaard's great. Declan Rice is great. The centre-back pairing is great. The goalkeeper's grown into it. There's a lot of good things about this football team and um, I ain't going to start moaning about things. There are idiots out there going, oh, Tetra will never win us a trophy. You just think, wind your ended, mate. What are you on about? Just give your head a wobble. It's it's ridiculous. Um, yeah, I, 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 I haven't felt this way about a team since the Invincibles. So... Um, I'm having a good time. Yeah, I, I bet you are. Right, rightly so. As well. I mean, yeah, Bakayo Saka is, is of course the uh, the one to watch. Uh, his old man is a Newcastle fan, though. Worth. worth I know that. Name. I know that. I I, I did realise that. Um, well, I'm happy for him. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, if it what if it wasn't for PSR and FFP and all that, you never know. Maybe one. Well, day. you've had to sell players, haven't you? You've had to sell players in order to. Uh, I mean, I mean. Losing, you lost a few, didn't you? And <laughs> um, you need to buy some more, though, don't you? Really? And it's whether you can. Yeah, it's... Um, yeah, what do you make of that rule, then? Because, obviously, we are completely hamstrung and have our hands tied. We can't progress as, as anywhere near as quickly as, as um, we'd all want to. Yes, we had a fantastic season a couple of seasons ago where we got fourth and we had a great time in the Champions League. We just would have liked that European adventure to carry on a little bit longer. But... Uh, are you relieved at these sort of rules so there's not more teams like Newcastle and Aston Villa that can really disrupt the um, the big five and, and Spurs? Well, um, I mean, with Newcastle, obviously, you've got the money. You've got owners who've got all the money in the world, as far as I can tell. And obviously, they'd like to spend it. Uh, I do think there should be some sort of keep it competitive because, you know, we're up against Man City. I mean, I, I, listen, I don't know how the 115 charges are going to go, but it's hard to compete. It's really, really hard to compete and, and it's only getting harder. Um, Martin Samuel writes, I, I can't remember who he writes for now, it might be the mail. I, can't, I don't read that rag, but uh, I do read his columns. Uh, maybe writes for the Times, and he and he's not very he's not very pro FFP. He thinks it's basically in order to keep the big clubs. When I say big club, you know what I mean the the yeah, yeah. Um, the big clubs in uh, uh, in the ascendancy. Um, obviously, as a supporter of a big club, there's a bit of a thing. Well, okay, um, yeah, I wouldn't like you to spend all the money you've got to uh, 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 to compete but you you do seem very hamstrung by the whole thing and it and it does seem I would say a little bit unfair um, but you got some players I just think you got in the Champions League a bit too soon to be honest with you I think uh, you know when we when you beat us and we ended up in fifth place we lost to Tottenham we lost to you and and there was a school of thought which I shared that w it was probably good for us not to get in the Champions League that season because if we had I think we would have had a similar season to what you had when you were in the Champions League. It was all too much for you. By November, you were emotionally sort of, you know, 
knocked out, I think, by the old thing. And and I think it would have happened to us as well. You've got to be ready for that competition. I don't think you had anywhere near the squad. Um, yeah, so sorry, that was a very long-winded answer to that, to that question. But you know what I mean, that I think I, I think at this point my team are ready and, and I think it, it does take a few seasons. Do, do you like Eddie? Do you like, I mean, Eddie's he's a good manager, Eddie, I think, but... Yeah. I think I think it's an interesting one at the minute, you know, because no, I wouldn't. Say, would I say Eddie Howe's under pressure? I don't think he's under pressure at the minute, but there's a. I think there's a, a feeling that, well, I thought I I thought the board did not help him at all. Yeah, in the summer. but I maybe they couldn't. They, maybe they couldn't. No, I I think they could. have. The money was there. The money was there to buy a because Newcastle really needed a right a right wing in the summer. Like I know they were after Mark Gay. And he's a, he's, a, he's a fantastic defender. He was brilliant for England in the US. I get that. But the club let anyhow down, not, not bringing in a right winger. And maybe a centre-half as well. We'll have that debate. But I think what a lot of fans are having a slight issue with is his in-game tactics and the reluctant to change plan A. And, I, and this is kind of the question I was going to ask you, Ian, because Mikel Arteta, this is, you know, an, an, another... He's had two very stellar seasons. He's actually been a breath of fresh air for probably for Arsenal fans since he's arrived. But have you seen differences in game from Mikel Arteta that maybe Eddie Howe should look at going further forward? Because I think that's probably the one thing that Newcastle fans are going to question Eddie Howe about is his in-game tactics. Um, I, do you know what? I honestly, boys, what the hell do I know? I mean, <laughs> they they play in these different formations and it's so fluid and Trossard was dropping quite deep the other day and it's amazing to see. And then we get inverted fullbacks. Um I sometimes think that Mikel is a bit cautious um, in games. Uh, you see some of the, the best managers, they seem to, you know, uh, Fergie did it, didn't he, years ago. He would re- they'd end up, they're one nil down and end up with seven forwards on the pitch and they go probably <laughs> gung-ho. And it, and it didn't always work, but there's a, there's a certain, um, uh, you know, gung-ho attitude from some of the best ones when they're in those difficult positions. And that's what people are moaning about uh, at the Arsenal at the moment. But what I see is a team that went from eighth to fifth to second to stronger second. Um, and, and you know, I look at the lineup now and there aren't many weaknesses and there's probably a squad of about 16 or 17, any of whom I'd be happy to have on the pitch at any time. Well, that is a lot better than it used to be. So... You know, if Mikel Arteta wants to do something during a game, <laughs> you go for it, mate, all right? Because you know a lot more than I do. Well, that kind of re-enhances your point about about um, the two sides' progression there. Yours has been a steady incline and ours has been from 12th to 4th and then back down to 7th, which we were kind of happy with, but then it was just a shame Man United shit out an FA Cup out of it. So we didn't get Europe. I was, you know, we were planning trips to Kazakhstan for, for that yeah, week yeah, in yeah. between. Yeah, uh, yeah, that was, the, but that's what I'm saying. I think that Champions League was too soon for you. I just don't think, I, I, it's incredibly hard, that competition. You come up against really, really good teams. Obviously, with a new format, it's a bit ridiculous. It's lots of 800 games before you get out of the group stage. It goes on and on and on. But, you know, there were empty seats at the Emirates the other day for the uh, the Shakhtar game. I mean, we're only three, three, what, two seasons back into it. Already people are going, nah, nah. I'll leave it for the League Cup against Preston on next Wednesday. <laughs> I mean, it's a bit, it's a bit mad, but I just think that... I, I think you have to progress in a steady way. Yours, going from 12th to 4th, that was a bit... That was a bit much. I mean, you to a certain extent, you got a season where May United were shit and continue to be shit. Tottenham bottled it, obviously. Chelsea weren't good enough. So you know, you you suddenly you find yourself and Villa hadn't come up yet, had you? So suddenly you find yourself in fourth, and you're like, well, this is great, but you didn't have the squad to cope, and that's that's what I'm talking about. So yeah, I I, I think Newcastle. Listen, Eddie Howe. If Eddie Howe, uh, I mean, I I always thought that England should have an English manager. But only Eddie Howe was the only one I would have had. The rest of them, I'm not having Graham Potter or whoever else. Um, but if Eddie Howe would have would have been up for the England job, I'd have I'd have had him because I think he's an excellent manager, and I think you guys should stick with him. Do you think, uh, in terms of Newcastle side of things, obviously Eddie Howe's got a you know a decent squad on paper, some excellent there's some excellent players there. Does anybody frighten you, or is there anybody that you'd like to see in an Arsenal shirt? Maybe a Swedish striker who. 
you know, has, the, has a number 14 and he's done all right and he's always been linked with Arsenal for the last Why are you months. trying to encourage him? He said, so well, it's all Arsenal fans want, they want bloody Alexander. He's like, we do. Happening. We do. Yeah, um, but... I mean, he's the one. Guimaraes as well, by the way. I, I do like Guimaraes. He's such a nasty bastard. I mean, he's yeah. just great. I watched him. And oh, by the way, in that game, when he elbowed Jorginho on the back of the head. I mean... Oh, um, wasn't it, an elbow. It, well, it was a forearm. Shall we say oh. a forearm? Which it is was attached, banter is what it which was. Which is attached to the elbow, as far yeah. as I can see. By the way, lads, I've got to go in a couple of minutes. I've got... Uh, but it's. I'm just saying, by the way. Um, uh, yeah, uh, Isak's the one. Isak is definitely the one. Um, he's a listen. If he's fit, he's an outstanding player. I mean, I mean, Kai Havertz is doing well for us, but it'd be nice to have some cover. You know, we'll keep Isak in the reserves, we'll pop him in for the uh, League Cup games. I'm just being a twat, all right. Just what do you want? Well, yeah, yeah, Cop well, me twat, all right. I'm I'm not... Welcome. Hello, nice to meet you. Yeah, I'm not disagreeing with you. Your, your words there. Uh, about how you're being, but um, finally, as as we are fully aware, um, time is time is precious. Um, where is this game going to be won and lost? And what are the key battles? And uh, round it off with a with a prediction for us. Uh, well, is Gordon fit? Is he fit? Uh, possibly. I mean, Howe said he could play uh, against Chelsea. So when Howe says something like that, I mean, he's probably out till the new year. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I mean, if Gordon's fit, he's a danger. Um, but if our players, if <laughs> if Timber and Gabriel are fit, I think you'll find it quite hard to score against us. And I, I, if Saka is back and doing what he does, I think you'll find it very hard to stop him. So two 0 to the Arsenal. Two 0 to the Arsenal. I, I, I hope that that's not the case, but I do hope Ian that you have a fantastic time in Newcastle. On the 16th of November, where of course you'll be at the stand for your well, the, the tour continues. The tour links continues. Are in the dis- links are in the description, whether you're watching on YouTube or listening uh, on the podcast. The links are in the description. I will be going to see the show, not at the stand, but I will be at the Glee Club Birmingham uh, towards the end of November. That's the last, so that's the one, last one. You that that will be the last one, but yeah, looking for I can't wait to go to Newcastle. I absolutely love it up there. Of course, I do. And there's no games that weekend as well, by the way. No, it's international it, weekend. It's, it was uh, five o'clock in the afternoon. I thought, well, if, if there's a 5.30, I'm knackered. But as it <laughs> turned out, I got away with it. So, uh, well, I'll, um, yeah, I'll see uh, viewers, some of you uh, at the stand in Newcastle, and I'll see you in um, Birmingham. Yes, Perfect. fantastic. All right, and uh, yeah. thanks for having me. No problem at all. Ian, it's been an absolute pleasure. I'm, I loved having you on the Green Room on the show, and we do. Well, well, we'll just say you hope you have a good time in a few weeks in Newcastle, but maybe not on Saturday. Yeah, but, have a shit weekend, lads. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All the best to you, too. Ian. Ian, thank you very much. And uh, again, make sure you get to see Ian wherever you are, if you are a Newcastle fan. If it is Newcastle, London, Birmingham, wherever. See but from myself, John, from myself, Jonathan Grimmett, my co-host Sam Miller, and today's guest, Ian Stone. We'll see you all very soon. <laughs>